Welcome, my name is Scott, and if you're here because you want to make some really cool intros for your live stream using OBS Studios, you've come to the right place. We're going to set up making countdowns and making the countdown end when your music ends, inserting text, inserting images. It is going to be super cool, super fun, and the tutorial is going to be really easy. Stay tuned for the details. If you're interested in tools and techniques to make your YouTube channel grow faster, subscribe and click the bell for new notification every Tuesday. I also provide live streams every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do the heavy duty research and you get the subscribers. Yeah! So when starting your live stream, it's always a good idea to have like an intro screen with some music playing and, and maybe a countdown timer just to let people know that the show is about to start. It lets the people build up and have some interest so that when you start, you've got an audience right away. So we're going to open up OBS and look at some of the elements the sources that build an intro screen. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going to open up OBS and show you an example of what I'm talking about. Here we go. As you see, it plays music right away. It's got my name in it. Uh, it's got some text. It's got a background image. So let's get into how I built this one step at a time with the sources. Okay, we're in OBS and in order to add sources to our live stream, we first must create a scene. So what I'm going to do is hit the plus key here. I'll type in demo intro. Okay. Hit OK. And now we have a scene that is a demo. Now I'm going to move because I have a bunch of other scenes in this uh, example here. I'm going to move demo to the top. So I do that by hitting these up keys and it one by one moves it to the very, very, very top. Okay, cool. Next part is to add an image. I'm going to place an image background in this scene. Okay, so I'm going to hit the plus key in the sources area and select image. And now we need to name it. Now it's important to understand naming because uh, after you've created all your sources, you may want to turn them off. And let me show you what I mean. So real quick, let's name it image. So I'm going to type in image in uppercase sp space with a dash and then type out what it is, background image, okay? Hit okay. Now it wants to know where your image is located. Now I wanna let you know, it's a good idea to create a folder that will always contain all your assets, your video, your images, all that stuff in a folder that won't be going away anytime soon. I don't want you to delete this folder by mistake because if you do, you will lose all your hard work that you've set up for the OBS live stream scenes. So make sure you create a folder that you won't delete by mistake. Okay, so I'm gonna hit browse now and I'm gonna find that image I'm looking for here. Here it is here, hit open. Okay, hit okay. Now it's not the full size of the OBS screen size, so I'm gonna hit the corner of this, click it and drag it out and get it full size. Now another thing that I've noticed about this is that um, it's a little bit bright. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna right click on the image dash background image source, okay? And hit filters. Then there, it gives you another screen pop-up thing here. Hit the plus key and select color correction. Okay, it's gonna to wanna to know what you wanna name it. Just leave it color correction, hit okay. And now we have all these awesome parameters that we can apply to the image. We've got gamma, does this kind of effect, right? You can make it dark like that. Um, contrast, brightness, which I want to dull down because we're going to be putting uh, text over top of this, so I want to make it a little bit darker. Saturation, uh, hue, shift, we can actually change the color of this thing, which is kind of cool. Let's see, we want to sort of, ooh, I'm going to bump up that green just a little bit. See how it's a little bit more intense? And we'll turn that down a little bit. Opacity is fine. I'll hit close and we are good. All right, awesome. So it's pretty, the color's pretty dramatic. It's a little bit darker. I like it, I like it. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is put in some text, which is my name. We're gonna choose a font that looks like cursive. It's gonna be cool. Let's do that now. We'll hit the plus sign and we will select text and I will type in, again, it's very important to name this properly, T-E-X-T -E with a space and a dash. Uh, Scott's name is what we'll put there. We'll hit okay. Now I will type in the text box here, Scott Victor, and I will select a font which is called Back to Black Demo. For some reason, that's a weird name, but it is a very cool font. Here's a secret. Always choose the highest, most largest size, okay? 
Now the reason why I do that is because if the size is super, super small and you make it bigger, it becomes pixelated. So you want to go as big as humanly possible every time you use text and shrink it down to size. That's much, much better. Uh, let's go, now this is some, people miss this, there's actually more parameters involved here. If you scroll down, you have color selection, okay? So I'm going to select color and we're going to just make this solid yellow. Uh, it does give you the ability to select two colors and have it fade into the bottom, into the other color. So as you can see right now, it's fading into white, but I don't want that effect. I would prefer just to have yellow, so I'll select yellow again. Now there's one more uh, parameter here. It has a very subtle drop shadow if you wish, and or if you'd like, you can outline it. I like to do both. I think it pops a little bit harder. So I'm gonna do that and hit OK. Now I'm gonna move my name to the center of the page here. I might make it just a tad bigger, not by much. And there you have it, awesome. So you're probably asking yourself, why do I keep on harping about the naming and the naming being correct? Well, it's quite simple, really. When you have a bunch of layers in your sources, okay, you may wanna turn them off periodically. For example, if you click the eyeball, for Scott's name, it can, you can turn it off and you can do this live, okay? Uh, maybe sometimes you, you have a background image like you see here and you know, you're working along and it's, and it's moving every once in a while and you don't want it to move anymore. Well, you can just hit the padlock and it locks it in place. And now there's a third thing. I actually have this screen already built in a scene called Intro and Countdown. Now if I click it, here it is finished, right? So all the scenes are already built. So if I hit the plus key and hit text, okay, as you can see here, there's a little space, a little uh, parameter that says add existing. If I click that, there's already one called text graphic workshop. I can select that, hit okay, and boom, it puts it right in there automatically. Just all I have to do is shrink it down to size and apply it. Let me turn on that cursive name. I'll just get that adjusted and I'll lock that in place. And now I can adjust the pre-created graphic. Pretty cool, I don't have to recreate it in the text parameter. Okay, this part of the OBS Studio Sources tutorial will involve both a source and a script because what we're gonna do is create a countdown timer. Okay, things are gonna get exciting now, here we go. First thing is first, I want you to create a text source. Make sure that you type in the word timer and name it countdown timer, okay? Now what I'd like you to do is use the font impact and make it a font size of 288 and center it on your page. Okay, this is crucial. Upon doing that, I just to let you know, I added some gradient. I put an outline around it, a little drop shadow, just to make it pretty. You can do whatever you want in regards to that. doesn't matter. Upon doing that, naming it Countdown Timer, go into Tools, Subchoice Scripts, and you will see this little box pop up. Hit the plus sign, and you will be presented with scripts that have been pre-installed into your OBS system, what I want you to do is select countdown.lua. Okay, hit open. Okay, now, next thing you need to do, and this some people miss this, is you want to make sure that it is selected so that you see the parameters. Turns it blue, and now you see the three core parameters that are involved with this. The duration of the countdown, the text source, in other words, what text source will you be assigning the countdown to, and what you see after the timer has concluded, which they call the final text. So uh, one caveat about the timer is that it only gives you increments of minutes. So if you're planning on playing music and you, you wanna make sure that the music ends when the timer ends, you're gonna need to modify the length of your music. So for example, I'm gonna make it one minute long and I have made some music, I, I uh, created another video modified the length of the music in that video and then converted that to an mp3. I've already set that all up so that when the timer ends, the music ends at the same time. It's really slick. So let me go in here real quick. We'll make this one minute. We'll hit the down arrow. Okay, there's the one. I'm going to select the text source, which we've already created. It is called Countdown Timer. Remember I told you to name it Countdown Timer. And as soon as you do that, you'll start, you'll see that it's counting down. Take note of all the zeros, okay? Uh, the next thing I want you to do is enter the final text. So I'm going to put let's go. Now you're going to, th this is crucial, type in let's go and then hit close. Now what I like to do is I don't like to see all these zeros. I like to see the first zero representing one minute, but I don't like seeing all these other zeros. So I hit my options key and I drag it over so I only see 
that first zero and I center it, all right? When this thing counts down to zero, watch what happens. Okay, here we go. Boom, you only see go, you don't see the word let's. That's because I shrank down the viewing area of the box and that's why you only see the words go. So maybe you wanna modify this on your side, that's fine. I just want you to be aware that when you do shrink the viewing area of the box, you won't see the entire word, okay? So it's just a little funky workaround that you have to deal with. Play with it and you'll get used to it real quick. What's important is that you understand how it works. Okay, now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the music, okay? So I'm gonna hit the plus sign and select media source as the source. I'm gonna type in music dash intro song. Okay, hit okay. Then it gives me a little box here. It asks me what media do I wanna put in. Uh, I don't want it to loop. I'll hit it. Everything that's pre-selected here in regards to the checkbox, this is fine. I'll hit browse and I will go over to where my music is real quick here. OBS sources, uh, work stream and music. Here it is here, one minute, hit open and hit okay. And as you can see, the music dash intro song, it shows up inside the mixer, but you don't hear the music. Um, make sure that if you see that the music is playing anywhere in the red or yellow, that's too loud. Make sure you bring it down so it's just peeking over the green into the yellow, just about like that much. Now, if you wanna hear the music, hit the gear and select advanced audio properties and look for the audio track here here you see the music intro song there's a pull down select monitor and output and now you can hear the music okay get close now here's what it'll look like i'll give you i'll give you a working example here we go okay there it goes the music is coming to an end we're coming down to three two one zero boom perfectly timed perfectly timed music and the timer comes to zero, the word go pops up, and you're ready to go live. Yeah, get some! Stay strong and keep fighting!